I had, uh, I'd been a pastor for a long time and uh, I loved the Lord and I preached lots of sermons. And I, I had an opportunity to go to some uh, revival services in Florida. It was in the, uh, it was in the mid 90s and uh, God was at work in this place, Pensacola, Florida. And, like people were coming from all over the world to see what God was doing. So Karina and I had this couple in our church and they came up to us and they said, we'd like to babysit your four children and send you to Florida. So we didn't even think a lot or even pray about that. We just felt it immediately was God. And um, so we went and uh, were a part of this. And, you know, we saw amazing thing happen. Things happen. Steve Hill was the, the evangelist. It was a move of God, went on for a number of years. And... And we saw people run to the altars and repent of their sins. We saw testimonies of healing and, and just, I mean, the freedom of the spirit, the joy of the Lord. And everybody was dancing and, you know, nobody knew how to dance, but everybody's dancing anyway. And that's the great thing about Christians. You know, most of us, we don't know how to dance, but, but we can jump, you know, my, some of us. You know, uh, my old dad, we, we had a season of, revival in our church and everybody was dancing and my dad he would have been I don't know 75 at the time and he was for everything you know he, he was for it but he was kind of a stiff old guy and uh, so we're all dancing and jumping and having a great time and he was over by the side of the uh, the, the platform and there was a step behind him so he's kind of you know kind of doing this you know not much elevation you know maybe the heels off an inch or something and and he fell over the step and fell backwards onto the platform some thought that he was under the power but we knew he just <laughs> stumbled you know and so <laughs> he came up to me he said you know I want you to know I'm for all this and uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be quite as aggressive with the dancing I'm just gonna do this from now on I'm just gonna do this so that's how my dad danced and uh, so, I mean, there was various manifestations, people getting free and, you know, shouting, doing all kinds of things. But what happened in my heart is that I, I felt a fresh call to read the Bible. And I started with a little Bible reading guide that, that they were talking about. It was written by a guy named Robert Murray McShane, who was an old revivalist back in the 1800s. And it was a daily Bible guide. There were four chapters a day in different places, four different places in the Word. And if you followed that guide, you would read through the Bible in a year. Well, that, that first year that I did that, I read through the Bible four times. And it radically altered my whole life. It changed me. It changed the way I preached. It changed the way I thought about life. It changed the way... I had conversations with people because God's Word got into my heart and it was systematic. I, I haven't maintained that pace and I've changed up how I read the Bible every year. This year I'm, I'm just going, as Billy Graham says, from cover to cover. But you don't have to do that every year, you know, you just, you change it up. But for some of you, your Bible reading is, is sort of inconsistent and spotty some of you you know you use your iPhone and you get like a verse of the day I just want to say to you especially to the young adults in the room that if you don't allow God's Word to be the foundation of your worldview you will get blown out of the water by the voices and the winds of this culture it's got to get into your spirit and you can read blogs and watch podcasts and listen to everybody else but if you can get God's word into your heart, it's going to give you that foundation so that you won't be tossed about by various winds of doctrines. There's winds of doctrine everywhere. I mean, now that you can go on the internet and watch any preacher you want, you get all these varieties of doctrine. You have to know what the word says for yourself. You've got to be in the book of Galatians to understand that we're not under the law any longer, right? You have to read the scripture to know that God is going to be faithful. So just a challenge. And can I just say to the men in the room, I've got a real heart for guys. 
I've had so many men come up to me and they, they say, Pastor Brent, you know, I want to read the Bible, but you know, I get up in the morning, I got, my mind is on work and I'm, you know, I, I got this and, and, and stuff, it's so hard to concentrate. So I, honestly, I, I just would really be blessed to help you, especially the men in the room, because uh, if you can start to get God's word in your heart in a new way, it will be transformational. This conference is about taking steps forward in our relationship with God. So for some of you, that's going to be to make a new commitment to read the Word of God. So after the service tonight, I'd love to meet you. And uh, if this book could be a blessing to you, that would be a blessing to me. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And I, you know, I, I love when, when we come to the house of the Lord and things are happening in the service that we haven't orchestrated. It's just the Holy Spirit who's at work. So during the worship tonight when Ange was leading us and talking about declarations of God, her and I haven't talked at all, but you'd think she'd read my notes. In fact, she preached pretty good, I thought. And uh, so you just know that the Holy Spirit is at work. This isn't, uh, we didn't have meetings all afternoon and say, and then you say this, and then that'll set it up for when I say this, and whoa, <laughs> the fire will fall. It'll go. So. God is alive and at work, and if we'll give him the opportunity, he'll move among us. And if you will give God the opportunity tonight, he'll move in your heart, and he'll change you, and he'll transform things in your life. So, I'm going to, you know, preachers, a lot of times we, we dawdle around at the beginning. I'm going to do my best to get to the end tonight, because I love the end of this message. So, Genesis 2, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. God is a God who breathes life. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. That life comes from God who breathes life. He spoke and the worlds came into existence. He said, let there be light. And the sun came into existence. God's voice, God's word is a life-giving word. Psalm 33 says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Isaiah 42 says, It is he who gives breath to the people on the earth and spirit to those who walk on it. Our God is a life-giving, life-breathing spirit. That's who he is. He's a good, good father, but he's also one who breathes life. When he speaks, things happen. Jesus, on the third day, was resurrected from the dead. We are people who believe in resurrections. Can you say amen in this church? I don't know. We believe that God can take dead things and bring them back to life in Jesus' name. We're people who believe that the things that are are material can be influenced by the things that are spiritual and change can take place. We believe in the power of miracles. We believe in the power of God to intervene into our world. Hebrews 11 says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. God made everything that you see out of things that are not seen. He's that God. Second Peter 3 verse 5 says, People deliberately forget that God made the heavens by the word of his command, and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. It's our God who made the heavens and who made the earth. It's our God who made you. It's our God who made every person who's out on the streets of London or sitting in front of their TV tonight. He made everyone, and he is who breathes life into everything that lives. I want to speak to you tonight about the things in your life that may seem to be dead, or things in your life that may have been pronounced dead by somebody else. I want to speak tonight about the spiritual condition of our city, and of our nation that appear to be dead and hopeless. But in God, I believe that there is hope. And when the voice of God and the breath of God comes into any situation, it comes back to life. There's a well-known passage in Ezekiel chapter 37. It's about the prophet Ezekiel being taken by God, being taken by God to a valley. And so let me just read to you this passage. It's a great, great 
story, and we're going to draw application to our life tonight from this story. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. Can everybody say very dry with me? Very dry. Not, not just a little dry, a little moist. Not, they were like very dry. They were dusty. There was no life, no moisture. And God said to me, son of man, sorry about the S on this, this microphone. God said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered and said, O oh Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And subtly, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. And indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. Also, he said, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Amazing. Ezekiel is taken to this place where there had been a great battle between two armies. The fight had been so violent and so extensive that there were hardly any survivors, not enough survivors to bury the dead, so they just left them there. And the sun bleached the bodies and the birds of the air and the animals of the field came and pulled limb from limb and spread them around. It was a chaotic, unorganized, impossible situation to put back together in the natural. There was no way. It was a valley full of bones, very dry, very disjointed. And the prophet is told by God to actually speak to those bones as if they could hear. He's told that you are to prophesy to these dead things. I don't know if you have anything in your life or in your environment that could be called dead or that seems to be dying. Maybe it's something in your health. Maybe it's in your family, your finances, your marriage. There are some people here today and there are things happening or not happening in your marriage and maybe nobody knows about it. But there's death entering in. Maybe it has to do with your children and their relationship with God. Maybe, maybe you feel like the direction for your life has died or you've experienced disappointments and a dream that you had or a failure that you've been through. You feel like that failure disqualifies you from ever fulfilling what you felt was God's purpose for your life. You feel like that dream has died. That, that thing is gone. I wonder if we can think of any death bringing things in Ontario. Is there any immorality in this province? Is there, is there any crime or corruption? Is there racism or hatred of people? Are there false religions or the blending of religions to cause confusion? Are there people who add Jesus to idols? Is there whip witchcraft? Is there any poverty in this province? I know there is. Is there drug addiction? Is there alcoholism? Are there people bound up in superstition and witchcraft? Of course there are. Are there pe people that are living in fear? People that are captive to bondage, to addictions? It seems like every time we turn around, there's some new drug that comes out that brings people into addiction. And certainly in Ontario, like every province in Canada, there's the love of money. And it brings death in people's hearts. What about in Canada? 
In Canada, we live in a nation where there is spiritual subjectivity, where our nation's religion says what I believe is good because I believe it. It's true for me, therefore it's true. It's not true because God said it or didn't say it. We live in a nation that is in moral decay. We see the persistent and vocal agendas of interest groups that push their perspective and deny God's ways. And those same people hate anything having to do with God or with anyone who says there is a right way to live and a wrong way to live. We live in a nation where there is actually a lot of resistance to the gospel, where there's a preference for self-sufficiency. We live in a nation where there's a lot of pride and arrogance among our people. Overall, the Church of Jesus Christ in Canada is not on the rise. Overall, in our nation, it's in decline. It makes news headlines. There are bright spots all over the country. There are good things happening in pockets all over the nation. And whenever we think that the thing is over, God comes in with something new and fresh and alive. So just don't be discouraged. But the reality is, on a national scale, it would be tough to say our nation is coming closer to God every day. It feels like we're going further away from God. We live in a nation where a lack of spiritual revival and renewal is normal. I travel all across Canada. This year I've been from Halifax to Vancouver Island in almost every province except New Brunswick and, Nova and uh, Newfoundland. Next January I'm going to be up in the Arctic in Tuk to Yuk Tuk. We live in a great land, but everywhere I go I meet pastors who are discouraged. I meet congregations who are struggling. What do we do next? How do we reach lost people? I meet workers who are tired, who are burned out. It's just, it's just kind of the nature of our land. Ezekiel is faced with a situation that is far worse than anything that I've described. It's a valley of physical dry bones. And it appears hopeless. It appears beyond any kind of repair. Next week... In Burlington is the pastor's conference for Western Ontario, the PAOC. And we will gather there. And the superintendent of our district, his name's Laurie Gibbons, called me and he said, Brett, I'm, I'm very, very concerned about the spiritual status of our district. He said, I feel like we've lost sight of the most basic of the pieces of our vision, which is to reach lost people. And not every church has. I'm sure that Gateway has a priority of reaching lost people. I can see it in, in so many ways in this house. But there's a crisis in many places, and it's a spiritual crisis. While Ezekiel faces these bones, I want you to put yourself in that situation as he stands on the edge of this valley and looks at all of these dry bones. And God says, I, I have two steps for this miracle to take place. Firstly, I want you to vocalize and speak to the bones. If it was me, I would have taken a look over my shoulder. See, you know, is there anybody around? I'm about to speak to a valley full of dry bones here, you know. Uh, Lord, I'm going to do this, but I'd just rather not have somebody watch me do it, you know. Okay. So the first thing is prophesy to the dead things. He said, prophesy to these bones and say to them, did you catch that? And say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to enter you. I will put flesh and sinews and I will bring you so that you will know that I am the Lord your God. He quotes God and says, this is so that you will know that I am God. This was impossible in the natural. And every one of you in your life and your circumstance in this city can think of things that are impossible in the natural. But God was going to be glorified. And I just, just want to remind you that Ezekiel wasn't prophesying to bones that were, you know, still moving around a bit. It wasn't like, you know, in Princess Bride, Billy Crystal says, he's not dead, he's just mostly dead. You know, the, these were not mostly dead bones. They were totally dead bones and dry. There was no life in them whatsoever. 
So he obeys, and he starts speaking to the bones. Can you imagine? And he says the word of the Lord. And as he does that, something starts to happen. There's movement. There's a rattling. And he says here, there was a noise. I want you to know that when God is about to do something, there will often be a noise in the spirit. But you hear people say this all the time. I sense something is moving in my spirit. There are some people here, and that's going on in your life. You say, something's up in my spirit. There's a bit of a noise. There's something happening in the heavens. That's what was going on here. When God told the armies of David to advance against the Philistines, he said, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you will advance quickly, for the Lord will go out before you. He was to wait for the sound of the marching of the armies of God in the tops of the trees, and then go out. So it's like Dave's the leader. He's like, okay, I hear the armies of God. Let's go. Amazing. When the day of Pentecost came, do you remember what happened? There was a sound like a rushing mighty wind. When God is about to do something, there'll be a rattling. And some of you have a stirring in your spirit. There's a faith rising up. I would venture some people in this church have been waking up in the night and feeling like God calling you to prayer. Something's stirring in your heart or you're burdened about something. You don't know what to do about it. Well, that's exactly what was happening here. When the famine was coming to an end in the time of Ahab, the prophet Elijah said, I want you to go up and hear, because I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. There was no rain yet, but the prophet could hear it in the spirit. Something was coming. And so Ezekiel in this passage begins to prophesy to dead bones. So the first thing is to identify the bones. What are the dry bones of your life? What are the impossible situations in your circumstance? What are the things in the city of London that you think that's never going to change? What about Western University? What are the things that you know about that school you think that will never change? What about our Canadian government? What about the press? What about the media? What about the social momentum of our country towards certain godless behaviors? Have you thought lately that's never going to change? Have you thought of people that you know that you think they will never come to Christ? They're so far from God. They're so bound up in sin. They're never going to come to Jesus. Those are the dry bones. And the first thing that the prophet did was to begin to prophesy to them and speak life to those dry bones. The second thing after he identified the bones was to speak life to them to speak life to them. And he said, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds and breathe on these slain that they may live. I'm going to ask you tonight to prophesy. I'm going to ask you to move a little bit into an area that some of you are saying, whoa, okay, <laughs> cool, I'll watch, you know. Now, I, I know that everybody in this house has some dry bones in your life. And often when we go to a conference, we come away with a list of things that we're going to do, we come away with a list of things that we're going to change. I'm going to ask you tonight to partner with God in faith to believe that if we release a prophetic word of the Lord toward those dry bones, that something can click in agreement with the heart and will of God, and there can be change where we haven't seen change for a long, long time. Prophecy is not just for prophets. The scripture says that it is God's heart that we would be a community of prophets. That's what the New Testament coming of the Spirit was all about. And not just that one person would be the prophet, but that there would be a people who live prophetically, speaking the word of God into the circumstances where there's death. Prophecy is a declaration of God's victory. There is ample biblical evidence that prayer and prophetic declarations of faith impact heaven. Actually, we're going to be praying a form of prayer tonight that is more in the form of a declaration than a request. You'll find, if you follow through the scripture, that God is attracted to faith. He's attracted to those who will believe his word. He's always looking for those who will cooperate with his hearts. So we're going to speak to the dry bones of our families. 
We're going to speak to the dry bones of the backsliders who used to be a part of this conference in years past, but they're not here tonight because they've gotten away from God. They're dry bones in their heart. Some of them feel like they can't come anymore. They're ashamed of the way they've been living. We're going to speak to the dry bones of those in our families and those that we know that have gotten away from God. We're going to speak to the dry bones of sickness in our bodies. It could be that there's a couple here and you've been wanting to have children. And to this point in time, you've not been able to conceive. Tonight, I want to believe with you that as you speak to that barrenness in your body, that what has been dead to this point in time is going to come to life in Jesus' name. And you will have a child for the glory of God. Because you'll give him the glory. We're going to speak to things that seem to be dead, that appear to be impossible. But by the name of Jesus, we're going to believe that they can turn around. We're going to speak to the dry bones of religion in this church because religion's in every church. I'm not trying to be insulting. I'm just saying we get comfortable doing certain things and they start out being cool and then they turn into a religion. That's how everything becomes in the church. And so we're going to say, God, if there's any dry bones, any religion, any barriers keeping this church from your destiny, we speak life into that. If there's resistance, if there's division, God in Jesus' Jesus name we speak life into those dry bones that is keeping this house from becoming everything that God wants it to be we're going to speak life into those who are struggling those who have gotten away from God and say come four winds of heaven and breathe on these slain we're going to pray for our families for our husbands for our wives for our kids we're going to pray for our nation we're going to declare life over this nation and say, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In Joel chapter 2, it says, It shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. In Numbers chapter 11, God was anointing a number of people in the realm of ministry and prophecy and there were two guys who didn't join the group, but they stayed in their tent and began to prophesy. And Joshua wanted to punish the guys. And Moses says this, are you zealous for my sake? Listen now. Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. First Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14.1 says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For many of you, you have put yourself in a spiritual box and you've said, well, that's, that's not my thing. You know, I, I don't do that. This conference is about you moving forward in faith. And intentionally, I want to push you a little bit tonight to believe that if you will speak in line with the Word of God, that in the next few minutes, we're going to accomplish something in the spiritual realm. I, 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 don't, I would, don't even have to guess. I know that there are many people in this room and there are circumstances in your life and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Well, we're going to speak prophetically to those things. You've, some of you, you've got business deals or a, a situation that hasn't been resolved and some, some of it's for years. Some of you have a conflict with another person that's remained unresolved. You haven't spoken to that person. It's like it hasn't changed for years. We want to speak to that and in faith believe that God is able to change those things. So I'm going to ask you to be the prophetic community of God in London tonight. I'm going to ask you to follow like what Ezekiel did and we're going to identify the bones and address them and say, oh, dry bones. Take a step of faith. And then we're going to prophesy life to those dead bones in agreement with the will of God. So here's, here's how we're going to do this. I've, uh, I've talked with Al back on the sound de desk and I've given him a, a playlist on my phone. And I'm going to work through this playlist with you and I'm going to describe different areas that I believe cover a lot of the categories of the dry bones. And we, as the people of God, are going to use our voices as a weapon, a prophetic weapon, to declare the life of God over things that look dead tonight and seem to be like they're not changing. I want you to begin in your heart to believe that something's going to be different after this thing we're going to do in the next few minutes. The Bible says that God hears us when we pray.
The Bible tells us that he hears and he answers. We don't understand his timing. We don't understand the extent of when he heals or why this one and not that one. We just know that he's good and that he hears us when we call. We also know from the scriptures that the angels respond when the people of God call upon his name. And there's activity that goes on in the heavens. So I'm going to ask you to stand and Al's going to start the music. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to start to use our voices to declare life to dry bones. The first area that I want us to declare life to, so you, I'm going to just give Al signals up and down till we get the volume right. The first area that we want to declare life to, the dry bones, is to backslidden and unbelieving family and friends. Let me ask a question. How many of you have a family member who's not following God tonight? Just about everybody in the room, right? How many of you know somebody in this city, they're a friend of yours, and they're not following Jesus tonight, right? The Bible says in Isaiah, fear not, I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Now I want you to lift up your voice and name those sons and name those daughters. And instead of asking God tonight, instead of praying and saying, Lord, will you, will you bring them back? That, that's absolutely fine to do. But tonight, instead of that, I want us to address the dry bones. So would you say with me first in your loudest voice, oh dry bones, are you ready? Oh dry bones, come on one more time. Oh dry bones, as we address the dry bones of backslidden and lost people, people whose hearts are hard and away from God. My sister is away from God. When she was 16 years old, she got so saved and then her life took some turns and she's away from the Lord tonight and it's only going to be a prophetic miracle that she comes back to Jesus. It's not going to be logic or some, it's going to be a miracle of God. So I'm speaking to the dry bones of my sister's life and we need to speak to the dry bones of your family members and your friends. In just a second I'm going to ask Al to turn the music up loud enough so that you can shout and not worry about who hears you beside you. I feel like so often we're intimidated by the sound of our own voice or worrying about what somebody else is going to think. I want to see you get free tonight to lift your voice prophetically and declare life. We've said, oh, dry bones. Now when you pray for those people, speak life into their heart. Speak faith into their life. Speak awareness into their spirit that they would come to Christ. Now, Holy Spirit, I just ask that you will come and fill this house with your powerful presence, that you will equip us with the anointing of prophecy to speak life to things that seem dead, to speak spirit into things that seem to be lifeless tonight, that they will turn around, that they will come back, that they will change in the name of Jesus. So Lord God, use our words, use our prophecy, use our faith in these moments, and we ask that you would respond in the name of Jesus. So church, let's lift up our voices and prophesy in the name of Jesus. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we prophesy life. I speak life into her. In the name of Jesus, all dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Lift up your voice, church. Let your voice sound forth prophetically. Jesus, bring them back. Bring back our sons. Bring back our daughters. We speak life into them in Jesus' name. Oh, come Holy Spirit, we pray. Life-giving Spirit, breathe life to hearts who are far from you tonight. Breathe life. Breathe life, Holy Spirit. We prophesy to them and say, come to life. Come to life in Jesus' name. Oh. 
We speak life to those dead things. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you God thank you God the next area that we're going to speak life to is sickness in Acts chapter 3 Peter and John came to the temple and they found the lame man they said we don't have silver we don't have gold but what we do have you in the name we give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and bones regained strength. If you have sickness in your body tonight, I want you in the next few moments to put your hand wherever the affliction, if, if you can do that without embarrassment, I want you to put your hand on your body where you have pain or where you have sickness. And I want you to just begin to speak life into that. If you've got a tumor, speak life into that tumor. If you've got an issue in one of your organs or in your blood or your lungs, your hearing, your eyesight, whatever it is, speak life to it. Those of you who are wanting to have children who've been unable to conceive, just discreetly put your hand on your womb, lady. Come on, sir, put your hand on your belly in the name of Jesus and speak life to it now. Go ahead for the next few moments. Speak life to your own body in the name of Jesus and receive your healing as you prophesy life over your body. In the name of Jesus, we speak to every sickness. We speak to every disease and we say life, life into our bodies. Life, health, vitality in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, we speak life to sick bodies. We speak life where there's pain. Remove that pain in the name of Jesus, I pray. Life, life, life in your name, oh God. In your name, where there's death been pronounced, we pronounce life. We speak to cancer. We say, come to life. Be healed and removed in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we ask that in this next few moments, as we are declaring life over our bodies, move among us, Holy Spirit. We ask that every sickness would be banished from this place. We pray that every disease would be halted. Lord God, that there will be testimony tonight of the declaration of life, that where there's death, where there's pain, that it will go in the name of Jesus. We speak life in your name to the bodies of the people in this room. I speak life furthermore to this house, that it would be a house of healing, that it would be like the pool of Siloam, that when people enter here, that the presence of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit will bring life to broken bodies. Lord, I pray for those who come into this house bound in addiction, that you will break those chains of addiction in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that you will break those chains of bondage as they encounter the life of the living God, the life of the living God. The next situation we're going to prophesy life to is to something that's been ruined or wasted. In Joel chapter 2, it says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God and my people shall never be put to shame. Just while I was reading that, I felt like there's somebody here or some people here and you've given up on a call that was on your life at some point as you were a young man or a young woman. And something happened and you gave up on it you feel like you've, you you feel like you wasted years and you're beyond being able to be effective in ministry for God and the Holy Spirit's just gonna birth a new vision a new life in you tonight some of you this situ a situation with a, a person you feel like it's ruined it's destroyed it can't be brought back to life maybe it's a business deal you feel like it's dead and gone so for the next few moments I want us to lift our voice and speak to anything that's ruined or wasted in our lives in Jesus name go ahead lift up your voice and let's prophesy Lord we speak to anything that's ruined anything that's devastated anything that's been broken and we speak life to it in the name of Jesus we speak life to it in the name of Jesus we prophesy life in Jesus name to a wasted relationship to 
a ruined situation to something that seems hopeless and without any ability to come back to life. Lord, in this house, we pray now, Holy Spirit, that you will bring things back to life. In the next few moments, I want you to begin to prophesy life into Gateway to this church. This is your church. This is the house where you fellowship, where you go and receive from God. But we want to just be sure that there's no death in this house, no religion, nothing holding us back. And so in the next few moments, will you speak life to the pastoral team? Will you speak life to the leaders? Will you speak life to the youth ministry, to the children's ministry, to the small groups, to the worship ministry, to everything that's going on? And for the next few minutes, rather than describing what's wrong, would you just speak life and shout in Jesus' name, a shout of victory over this house. Let's go ahead. In Jesus' name, for Gateway Church. For Gateway Church, we speak life in Jesus' name. Life in Jesus' name. That you will bring things to life. That you will awaken, Lord, what is dead. If there's any religion, Lord, we speak life to it. If there are any barriers, we speak life to it. If there's a lack of finance, we speak life to it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Lord, bring it back to life. Let's take a couple of minutes here, everybody, and lift up your voices. Go ahead. We speak life. We speak life. Awakening, oh God. We speak life in your name, Lord Jesus. In your name, oh God. In your name, Lord Jesus. Bring it back to life, Lord. Faith in our hearts. Lord, we speak life into the finances. We speak life into the evangelism. We speak life into the relationship with the neighbors. We speak life, Lord God, that you will awaken faith in the pastor's heart, that you will awaken faith in the leader's heart. We speak life to this church, life to Gateway, life to this house. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we speak, Lord. Declare it, church. Address any dry bones and speak life to it in Jesus' name. Go ahead and prophesy. Go ahead and get bold in your faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Your will be done, Lord God. Your will be done in this house in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, hear our cry, we pray. Hear our cry, Lord. Hear the cry of our heart for revival, Lord. Hear the cry of our heart for a move of your spirit, Lord. Hear the cry of our heart for breakthroughs in healings and deliverance and miracles, Lord. Hear the cry of our hearts for the lost that surround this church, the thousands who live in these houses and apartments, God. Let it be like the rising of your sun over this area in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come now and bring life. God, where there's darkness, where there's death, where there's apathy, where there's indifference, bring your life, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, we pray, in Jesus' name. Come on, church, push in a little bit. Push in a little harder. Push in a little further. Take a hold of something that God has put on your heart that you haven't seen come to life yet and declare life in Jesus' name. Take a hold of that vision. Take a hold of that faith in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. We declare life in your name, God. Increase our faith in this moment. Increase our faith, oh God. Life to this house. Life to this house. Life to this house in Jesus' name. We speak to it. We declare it in the name of Jesus. Awake my soul. Lift up our voice in praise. Come on, everybody. Let's lift up a shout of victory before the Lord tonight. That God is doing things in the heavens. Lift up a shout of victory. That God's at work among us tonight. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. 
Let's just transition a little bit. Will you join me in praying for our nation? I want us to lift up our voice and speak life to Canada. That our country needs a revival from one coast to the other. From the river to the end of the sea. Our, our parliament building says that he shall have dominion. Let's pray together in this moment and declare life in our land. That there will be life in every church. That there will be life in every pastor. That there will be life in every city. In the name of Jesus. Can we lift up our voices for a few minutes and speak life to Canada. Can you speak the word revival in our land? Can you speak the, the word of faith that God is going to do something new? Declare it. What's on your heart? What are the dry bones of this land? Speak life to them in Jesus' name. Speak life to this land. Oh God, we call upon you for Canada right now. Lord, we speak life to the dry bones of crime and injustice, of human trafficking, of drug addiction, of alcoholism. We speak life to those in political places who have a wicked heart, who have not decided that they're going to follow you. And we call them to life in Jesus' name. We pray for those in government. We pray there be a revival in the Houses of Parliament in Ottawa in the name of Jesus. We pray for the municipal rulers of the city of London that there would be a revival in this city, Lord God. We speak life where there's death. We speak life where there seems impossibility. And we say in Jesus' name, come to life. Could you lift your voice in the next few moments and just call upon God for Canada that God would do something marvelous, that he would raise up this land, that we would be a blessing to us other nations of the world. Go ahead. Just lift up your voice. Oh God, hear our cry. Hear our cry, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We lift up our cry to you and say, Oh God, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, we pray. And bring back dead things to life. Lord, churches that are dead, bring them back to life. Pastors who are discouraged, bring them back to life, Lord. Churches that are divided and full of controversy, bring them back to life by your Spirit, Lord God. We pray for the churches of London, God, that you bless every one of them. Lord, we speak life into this city, life into every person's heart. Bring them back to life, we pray, oh God. Oh God, hear our cry, we pray. Just speak to any dry bones that you see in the land and speak life to those dry bones in Jesus' name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. No one believes can be done, God. Do what no one thinks could ever happen in our land. Lift up your name, Lord. Let your fame be known in this country. Oh, God, be glorified in Canada. Lord, keep your promise to us that you would bless, that you would raise us up as a nation to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, I breathe life into our nation, we pray, oh, God. Life, hear our cry. My heart is at rest. Whoa. You bring in the dead things to life. Yes, God.
next few moments, I want you to put your hand on your heart and I want you to prophesy life to your own soul. I want you to speak to anything that's dead inside of you. Anything where you've lost hope. David said, I, I almost gave up hope until I believed that I would see the Lord in the land of the living. Have you given up hope? Has your faith been damaged? Have you given up your faith? Have you gotten discouraged or sidetracked? Have you gotten angry or bitter? Have you become a cynic, a critic? Go ahead and prophesy to your own soul. Some of you have known seasons in your life where the presence of God was so close that you felt like you were just walking with Jesus. Maybe your Christian life has become a routine. It's become a Christian routine instead of something alive. So go ahead, put your hand on your heart and prophesy life to your own soul in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Speak to your soul and say, soul, come to life. Life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Soul, we say, come back to life in Jesus' name. My soul, my soul, hear the word of the Lord. My soul, hear the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Strip off all the shackles, God. Strip off the religion and the tradition. Set me free, God. Give me a passion for your name, Lord Jesus. A freshness, God. A vitality. Let, my, let me remember the things that I once did, Lord. Let me not forget where you brought me from, Jesus. Take us forward, I pray, and we speak to our own souls and say, come back to life. Come back to life in Jesus' name. Come back to life in Jesus' name. Some of you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You've never been filled with the Spirit. You don't know what that means. Just ask Jesus right now, fill me, Holy Spirit. And then start to speak with a new language as your heart cries to out to God. Love. Some of you got stuff going on. You need Jesus to break through. Back Prophesy to your own soul. Prophesy to your own soul. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Into the fire. You are refining our hearts in the flames of your presence. Set apart for a God above. Set apart for the one we love. Set apart. Lord, we believe that you hear us when we pray. Lord, we believe that you work on behalf of God's people. And by faith, Lord, we expect to see changes in the heavenly realm. We expect to see people who've not been interested become interested. We expect wayward and backslidden sons and daughters to return in Jesus' name. The last thing I want you to do is between husbands and wives. And if you don't have your spouse with you, then I want you to find a friend, men with men, women with women, young adults, single people, find one person, guys with guys, girls with girls. And I'll just tell you a quick story. I believe that it is the responsibility of husbands and wives to speak life into your partner. Because you know them better than anybody else. You know what God has made them to be, how God has shaped them. But oftentimes, I talk to people and they say, I know there's more in my man than what I'm seeing. And I talk to men and they say, I know that there's more in my wife than what I've seen. There have been a couple of times in our marriage that have been really dramatic where Karina has ministered prophetically to me. And we have this phrase that we use, this is what I know to be true of you. And then we speak that. This is what I know to be true of you. There was a time a few years ago where I was, it was going through a tough time in the church. Church leadership has challenges. And it was, you know, it was a large church, a lot of people, a few thousand and staff, 50 people and on and on. So there was always something going on and it was a tough season. And I'd 
just I'd gotten really tired and one morning this is the only time it's ever happened to me I I physically felt like I couldn't get out of bed it's never happened before I just said she came in and I said sweetie I, I just I just can't get out of bed I'm embarrassed I was crying and she just she didn't ask permission she just put her hand on my shoulder and she began to prophesy over me and it wasn't fancy words it was just this is what I know to be true of you and I'll tell you some of the things she said just to illustrate she said you are a man of God and God has called you to this work and your integrity is in intact and I believe in you and I believe and she just spoke these things and as she was speaking I could just feel the life of the Holy Spirit coming back into me it's almost like a bicycle tire that's flat and you've got a pump and you just kind of feel it being pumped up in the next few minutes I want husbands and wives to turn and face each other and wives I want you to start and I want you to put your hand on your husband's chest and I want you to speak life to him I want you to speak what you know to be true of him I want you to speak of the respect that you have for him and the faith that you have and the gratitude that you have and if you believe for things that you've not yet seen in his spiritual life I want you to speak those things over his life do you know ladies the number one issue for men in the church is they feel like they're not leading like they should one of the biggest things they need is to know that they have your respect and that you see it in them and you believe in them so ladies I want you to speak life to your husbands and then after the wives have spoken to the husbands then husbands put your hand on her shoulder and just begin to speak life into her there have also been times where I've said to Karina sweetie this is what I know to be true of you this is who you are. This is who God made you to be. You're not this person who thinks this way of yourself. I don't know whether all ladies are like this, but my, my lady occasionally puts herself down. She says things that are negative about herself. And one of my commitments as her husband is to prophesy life to her and say, that's not who you are. That's not who God made you to be. That's not what's true of you. So husbands, I want you to speak over your wife. Speak of her beauty. Speak of the gratitude that you have for her. And as you do this, this is only going to take a few minutes, but I want husbands and wives to prophesy life. And let this be just a little illustration of how you can minister to one another. Some of you couples, you never pray together. You don't know what to do. Tonight's a beginning for you, okay? Young adults, single people, find somebody that you believe you can minister to and pray for them. Guys with guys, girls, this is not an opportunity to speak prophetically over who you feel should be your wife at some point in time I see you in my future I, I, I believe it's God that that's not so girls with girls guys with guys turn and face each other now for the next few minutes speak life to your spouse go ahead you can turn it up a little bit not quite so loud a little louder thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh. When you are Today, as you drive through your city, I want to encourage you to speak life to the, to the university. When you drive up the street to your house, speak you life to those neighbors' houses. When you go to work on Monday, before you walk through the door, speak life to that place where you work, where you serve. If you travel and you go to a different city, start to speak life as you come into that city. And begin to believe that there is power released. As Ange said earlier in the service, that there is a proclamation, there is power released in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'd like you to stand, everybody. <clears throat> I want to encourage you, you know, 
It's an amazing thing to have a, a conference like this. Hey, Al, we can just turn it down a little more. You know, and it's, it's a lot of church. I know that. But can I just encourage you tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, we've been focused on kind of moving through, but tomorrow I'm going to shift gears and try and give you what my heart is for lost people. I believe that if for this church to become what God wants us to become, our hearts have to be for lost people. That God heals us up and prepares us, equips us, gifts us. But church makes sense when lost people are getting found. Families make sense when babies are being born and family members are being added. So I want to ask you to, I know you're probably tired, and I'm sick of myself, so I can't imagine how sick you are of me, but I won't shout tomorrow morning anymore. I did it all tonight and blew up my voice. So please come back tomorrow, whatever service you attend, and plan to come tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, we're going to pray for everybody. Everybody will be, have hands laid upon you. We're going to anoint you with oil that we would receive a fresh impartation of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit said he's going to help us. He's going to help us because we don't feel like we can do what God wants us to do, but the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to help you. So we're going to pray for everybody and believe God for great things. So, uh, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord that happened here tonight. I'm going to ask you to believe in faith that things are changing in the heavens, that everything is not as it was when we came into this place, that we have actually done something in the spiritual realm for God's glory. Everybody said amen. 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 Pastor.